all these politicians that is coming out at this particular point of time to expose what Unamdekano told them, you understand? And Unamdekano review names of some Southeast governors who are behind his detention. Coming out now to state it is even, I can even say you guys too are, are one of the reason why the thing is, the thing keep on delaying because I don't see any reason why Namdekano will review all these names to you and you will keep quiet since when Namdekano has been in detention. Well, I don't want to waste much of your time, you understand, because the video is over 25 minutes, you understand, so I want you guys to watch the video. Observe everything that Prof. Charles actually stated that Namdekano told him that this set of people are the people that is behind his continuous situation. So if you watch the video finish, please try to share your opinion in the comment section and also while you are sharing your comments, don't use hate speech. And say hate speech comment is going to be removed instantly. So thank you for watching the video. When the political leaders have the will to do that. So why do you think they don't have the will? Is there some sort of political or pecuniary gain for the continuation of the crisis in the region for those politicians? Yes, some of them are not interested. This uh, is well, it's alleged that some of them believe that uh, they are not popular enough because people somehow believe in Nandekano because of a number of things. So you think they'd rather keep him incarcerated? <laughs> so a number of things. But some of those governors have come out and, and have led delegations yeah, to yes, the presidency to try and get him released. Yes, that is recently. Mm. As a matter of fact, when we got there, Nandekano accused some politicians of uh, being um, lukewarm, part, you know, not me, just lukewarm, that some politicians contributed to his continued incarceration. He mentioned some names. I wouldn't want to go into that mm. because I didn't, I wouldn't say I verified the facts, but he mentioned some names. And if you look around, Namdekara has acquired popularity. So this thing you are talking about fashion is because Namdekal is detained. If he is released, these people that are hiding under IPOB and the other thing, they will not come out. He has that high command. Hello and good morning. Do you remember there was a time I made a video about how the some Southeast politicians are making sure that Namdekano will not be released from detention, that it's not just the federal government holding Namdekano, that if your people is not against you, the outsiders will not succeed against you. So I was forced to mention some names of the politicians who are responsible for the incarceration of Namdekano. And, um, you know, I did. I did to some people because I know I have first-hand information about that. So I am happy that Namdekano as well have mentioned exactly the same name but these are classified information because you know the author of this information is still in detention and um if he says something to you you have to verify what he said because you don't want anybody to drag you anyway you see i am happy the way things are going this man that granted arise um interview yesterday in on arise news he said that even in the southeast that the military the police are even telling people that today is had um, sit at home that you have to sit at home there is no you know need to pretend that um, the people of the southeast are not prone to biafra agitation these people biafra has taken over everywhere so i think it is time for nigeria to do things peacefully it is time for us to talk to people it is time for people to sit down and talk that what is the way forward because if we continue like this at the end we'll see that you can defeat people who has a particular idea, who feel that they don't belong to one place or the other. They can listen. Well, I understand that um, for a number of people I talked to, they said that uh, there was a directive from uh, Simon Ekpa faction of IPOB directing people to stay at home on Tuesday. It used to be Monday. But about two years ago, there was a Tuesday like that. And so, and people didn't come out. I asked why. Uh, why that order um, was issued, various state governments issued a counter one that people should ignore that. <laughs> Surprisingly, people obeyed 
and stayed at home. I called some people around 4 p.m. this afternoon, and they told me they had not even opened their gates, young men, because of this. And I asked them why. I said, well, it's true that the state governments, Southeast state governments, Enugu, Anambra, that they, yes, they are sure people that nothing will happen, but that there were no concrete arrangements. Basically, people don't trust yes, the government. to protect the people. Right. They so don't trust the government. Yeah, that, yeah, they've lost confidence in government. They don't believe that government will do anything. And surprisingly, if you go to the southeast, every 500 kilometers, you see military and police checkpoints. But on Monday... You mean every 500 meters, not kilometers. Sorry, right. every 500 meters, right. please. Thank you. Half a kilometer. You see police and military checkpoints. But on Monday, you go in most parts of southeast. They're gone. You don't see them showing. And the military, the police, are federal agencies. On Monday, you don't see them. In fact, there was the occasion I was traveling. A security man had to remind me, he said, Prof, you don't know that today is Monday. The person that's supposed to protect people. Right. And so... In, in other words, the person on whom the state governments are saying to have confidence yes, in, yes, to protect you, yes. is telling you people that not, to be, there, not yes. to be out on a Monday. Yes, yes. Right. Yes, I traveled to the Satis and uh, I was going to the airport to catch flight back to Abuja. Mm. And a security agent, I said, oh, guy, you don't know that today is Monday. I said, and so what? And so, you see, on that very Monday, the security agents, instead of staying to man the various places, you will not see them. But every other day, you see them on road. Why do you think they're not there? Because we believe that a part of the Security challenges we are having in the Southeast are sponsored by external forces. I, I want to give an example. For example, you remember when the Owere Correctional Center was invaded. For almost three hours, Owere Correctional Center is a shouting distance from the State Police Command, a, poly, a, a government house, about 10 minute drive from military base Obinze. But the so called un uh, unknown gunmen operated for close to three hours and no person was arrested. But that's not unique to the Southeast. It though. is, it is. Well, it, it is. isn't. Because I mean, there have been a lot of incidents in other parts of Nigeria, yes. including the North, mm. where Boko Haram operate and bandits operate, where people have told the same stories that you're telling. No, that of the Southeast is peculiar because Igbos generally are noted for non-violence. Igbos don't believe in violence. Traditionally, Igbos don't believe in violence. And the, even IPOB has repeatedly denied that they have no hand in this seat at home. Yeah, but you said it was Simon Epper. It Although Simon Epper came yes. out yes. And, and said he didn't yes. ask anybody to yes. stay at he home has on, also on denied Tuesday. that. Yeah. He has also denied that. People said, said, people said. But even Simon Epper has denied that. Nam the colonel has repeatedly said that his sons are not in this seat at home. His, uh, his colleagues in Apple have also repeatedly come out and said this. And we put it back to federal government to arrest the perpetrators of this insecurity in the Southeast. Right, and you think that that is why it persists? Because, well, because I mean, it would be like sh shooting yourself mm. in the foot mm. because the, the government needs economic activity yes. in every part of the yeah. country yes. in order for the country to grow. So yes. if you're penalizing particularly a particularly commercial part yes. of the country, yes. Um, then you're shooting everybody else across Nigeria. Yes, so it doesn't yes. really make sense, does it? No, no, no. You see, you see that the South is generally it's not there for business. Our people are business oriented. And um, this seat at home has, a f has adverse effect on commercial activities. Well, obviously, in that, that's fairly obvious. Um, and we are not comfortable Right. This situation. Well, let me ask you this. I mean, how much has this persistence of insecurity in the Southeast got to do 
with the continued incarceration of the IPOB leader Namdi Kano. You mentioned him yes. a minute ago. Our leaders, Chief Emmanuel Iwanyamu, in fact, it was the last official assignment he had before he died, visiting Namdi Kano at the DSS facility. Uh, Chief um, <laughs> Dr. Oh, um, Opadike, the former governor of uh, Anambra State. Then the other one, all of them in unison believe, the Igbo elders in unison believe that uh, the release of Nam de Kano is central to peace process in the South. Yeah, but you, you, you just said a minute ago that Nam de Kano said he has, his hand is not in yes. the... Yes. So obviously someone is doing yes. it. So, so people, why would his release no, have no, no, any no. effect on Some that? Some people are using him as an excuse to perpetrate violence in the South East. Right. People use his name as an excuse to perpetrate violence. And we have repeatedly asked Mr. President to kindly release Mr. Namde Khan. At, even at worst, grant him executive bail. Bail, sorry. Grant him bail. Let him come from whom? Let's see now who we had under Namde Khan to perpetrate violence in the southeast. Right. I'm going to come back to that issue of how the problem can be solved. But yes. you mentioned the fact that this has crippled or at least deeply affected economic activities yes. in the southeast. Just help us quantify, as far as you can, the economic losses that have been incurred in the southeast as a result of things like this sit at home the, problem and the overall insurgency the, the losses run into billions of naira for example if you go to Abba, for example i called some people in Abba, where you have a number of uh, smes operating they told me there is uh, an employer i know he has about 1500 workers he told me that he had been at home since yesterday mm. many of them and this is not just the thing. The things that you have used that are now roaming, I, do, I don't mind. It's devil's workshop. But that's across Nigeria. Yes, I don't mind. It's devil's workshop. As you can see that if this crisis in the South is insecurity, if this insecurity persists, then will come when many people... In fact, it will aggravate the unemployment situation. Because if you're an employer, uh, uh, seven days of the week, you go only four times. Certainly, with time, it will affect your general mm. output. And that means you may downsize. And by the time many SMEs downsize, you can imagine what will happen. So mm. the unemployment market will uh, uh, saturate to the point that violence, greater violence, May visit the southeast. So, so how do you think this problem can be solved? Is there yes. a military solution or is the answer political or a combination of the yes, two? Yes, a combination of this. Number one, the release of Mr. Namde Kalm is central to peace process. Two, the political leaders of southeast should do more. They are not doing more. And that's why people have lost confidence in them. Rather, people prefer to obey non-state actors. They should do more. Basically, the governor should come up and find a way of handling the issue. Some of these youths, whether they are Igbos or non-Igbos, create uh, economic activities for them. And some of them will help in governance. Two or three, we've advocated for state police. That one may be a long-term thing, but we want a situation where the federal agencies should begin to post indigents to their place. If you post Igbos in Igbo land, policemen, military men, if they don't work, uh, of course, they will work. It just any state, you post the indigents there. As police officers, as military officers, they will work. So let before we get the state police uh, approved, let Inspector General of Police begin to post senior police officers to their state of origin. Right. Okay, well, let me take you up on something you mentioned earlier, yes. which is 
uh, two things, actually. One is the potential political solution yes. to the problem. Um, and the other one is the governors of the Southeast, Southeast region yes. um, being more proactive in seeking that political solution. Yes. Um, some have said that even if they came together and said, OK, let's pick IPOB, for example, and sit down and negotiate with them, yes. um, that IPOB itself has become factionalized with one group still loyal to Namdi Kanu, another to Samuel Epper, and possibly a third shadowy branch. Does that make it more difficult um, for them to have some kind of negotiated settlement? It will, it, it will not be a problem. As a matter of fact, we talk with some of them, and they're all willing for peace. We talk with some of them. As a matter yeah, of fact, you, you said some, not yes, all of them. I wouldn't claim to talk uh, to have talked with all of them, but I know, including myself, we talk with a number of them. We explain to them the need to have peace. We explain to them that whatever is happening is affecting our people more. And the number of them are what... Yeah, but you know, there's a big difference between yes. a political wing that yes. you can see and talk to and a military wing yes. of an organization. Yes. I mean, yes. I, I remember, for example, the IRA mm. in, in Northern Ireland. Yes. You know, I mean, the IRA... Sinn Féin was their political way, and, and they would sometimes go out and say things, and I, the IRA would do something completely when different. I, when I said their leaders, mm. <clears throat> I mean the political wing, the people that actually command them. We visited the Namde Kano, as I told you. Mm. That was the last assignment Chief Imane Iwanyamu did before he died. We visited him. He spoke. In fact, this afternoon I talked with him as a leader and the others. So bringing them together will not be a problem. Right. If the political leaders have the will to do that. So why do you think they don't have the will? Is there some sort of political or pecuniary gain for the continuation of the crisis in the region for those politicians? Yes, some of them are not interested. This, uh, is, well, it's alleged that some of them believe that uh, they are not popular enough because people somehow believe in Nandi Kano because of a number of things. So you think said. they'd rather keep him incarcerated? <laughs> so a number of things. But some of those governors have come out and, and have led delegations yeah. to yes. the presidency but to try and get him released. Yes, that is recently. Mm. As a matter of fact, when we got there, Nandi Kano accused some politicians of being um, part, you know, not just clean. lukewarm, that some politicians contributed to his continued incarceration. He mentioned some names. I wouldn't want to go into mm. that because I didn't, I wouldn't say I verified the facts. But he mentioned some names. And if you look around, Namde Kara has acquired popularity. So this thing you are talking of fashion is because the Kali is detained. If he is released, these people that are hiding under IPOB and the other thing, they will not come out. He has that high command. But in negotiation, you don't neglect any person. Mm. We we'll neglect, we'll negotiate with all of them, and they are ready to embrace peace. Now, in June this year, yes. I don't remember if, if I talked to you about it, but there was talk that um, Mr. Kanu's lawyers might enter into negotiations with the federal government mm -hmm. through the office of the Attorney General in order to seek some sort of settlement. Yes. Did that ever get off the ground or is it stalled? Yeah, well, uh, I think they tried, but like uh, everything about Carla, at this stage there was a uh, frustration. You know, right from the onset, you remember that the Federal High Court, presided over by Binta Nyakos, mm. discharged him of eight of the 15 charges against him. He appealed. And the three-man uh, panel unanimously acquitted him of the remaining seven. 
ordinarily, federal government didn't obey that uh, thing. Federal government detained him, and not just I said that they were going to appeal. I detained him when you were not ready to appeal. You kept him for many months before eventually federal government appeared. That means at the time they said they were going to appeal, they had no case against him. Why did you detain him? Mm. So, you see, it's like that his own case seems to be exceptional. And that is why our people are, they are gaining sympathy. The non-state actors are gaining sympathy in Igbo land because government doesn't seem to treat the, that side of the country as they treat others. They will tell you other people, Sunday Woho is working, okay? And others. Why is federal government still detaining Namdekano? So you think the conflict in the southeast is unique? Because, I mean, there are insecurities and conflicts across several other parts of Nigeria. And, in fact, in those cases, for example, in the northeast, I mean, mm. they're not going around, you know, taking the people to court, they go in there <clears throat> to kill them. Insecurity, crisis, are uh, natural. And according to Karl Marx, mm. in every society, in every organization, you have, and it is the struggle for the control of uh, resources between two opposing groups, they have and they have not. So it is there. But that of strategy is unique in the sense that it doesn't have that bearing on the struggle for the control of resources within the people. It has externally, it has external influence. And that external influence, we believe, we call upon the federal government because Mr. President is Chief Security Officer of the Federation. Yeah, but you, you said you talked to some of these um, agitators yes. and separatists. Yes. I mean, what do they say to you? Can't you say to them? I mean, you yes. know, th this whole thing, negotiation is a matter of give and yes. take, yes. not take and take. Yes. You see what I mean? Yes. What first, concessions are they prepared to make? First, why did you have IPOP? IPOP came up as a result of uh, the belief that the Igbos were grossly marginalized in the affairs, in the governance of the country. Talk of uh, appointment, talk of distribution of projects, talk of other things, talk of state. South is the only state that has only five. Others have minimum of six. You can see the recent appointment. Every other zone has a minimum of eight ministers. South East has only five. So local government, Kano, Kaduna, and uh, Jigawa, if you put their local government together, it's more than that of South East put together. The other day, the governor of Bayelsa was uh, also is not in South East. But that of South East is aggravated. We have only 15 senators. House of Red. In fact, Kano alone, the number of House of Red is almost more than. So the you're saying that that's the reason IPOB came it's part of the reason. Marginalization. Well, let, let me ask marginalization, you this. Marginalization. Yes. I mean, how does it? Even if the, the points you're making mm -hmm. are, are true, and, yes. and you know, it's important to emphasize wherever there is injustice, yes. that must be emphasized and, and and spoken about emphatically. Yes. But I don't understand the logic of IPOB inflicting further punishment on that southeast region. I told you that IPOB has come out several times. I said that they Yeah, but they no started the sit at home thing. Yeah, they started. They, they carried out a no lot of violence. And but IPOB, <coughs> Masop, they believe in non-violence. I've, I've never seen any of them carrying arms. They believe in non-violence. Yes, they know they believe that they have a good cause to pursue. But they don't believe that it should be done through violent way. Are you saying that IPOB has, hasn't carried out violent activities well, in the southeast? I, I, I wouldn't. Which they themselves have no, admitted no, that they carried no, out. No, no, I wouldn't say that. But IPOB generally, mass of generally, they believe in non-violence. They believe in non-violence. It was believe in non-violence. We don't believe in violence at all. And so... No, no, it's you know, it's, 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 I mean, I, I don't mean to kind of belabor the point, but, yes, but you're, it? it's, it's important that 
people who are not from that region yes. and who have nothing to do with the <clears throat> government, but yes. who just are listening in, yes. understand the context in which you're speaking yes. as a way of being enlightened further about what is going on mm. there. What is the logic behind whether or not IPOB has started pulling back, mm. having already muddied the waters? Yes. What is the logic behind going to inflict economic hardship Yes. On the very people you're saying are being denied yeah. economic yes. opportunities yes. Yes. and are being marginalized and inflicting violence yes. upon them. I mean, well, what's the logic of yes. that? Yes, we've, we've, some of them, we've talked to them. Yeah, what they do they say, say to you about they that? They say they have no hands in that, that they don't believe in that. And, and that's why we're also asking the federal government, please help us direct the perpetrators of this. Find out why on Monday police checkpoints will not be operational. Every other day they will be there. Right. Find out who sponsored these people. You know, you know, if it is IPOB, arrest them. Yeah. We will not come and defend them. If it is IPOB or MASOP, arrest them. But the truth is that federal government has not been able to arrest them. And this is worrisome to us. If IPOB said they have no hand, MASOP said they have no hand, Federal government, uh, the chief secretary officer is the Mr. Right. President. Please arrest the perpetrators of this. Our people are not comfortable. Our people don't want this. Uh, so we are essentially business-oriented people. So, and so, we want that business to continue. Right. So, so it is your sense that part of the reason why this persists yes. is because the federal government is reluctant to... Do the apprehend these people, or the insurgents have become pow yes. so powerful yeah, that, the, that you really can't just you know go and pick them up. Federal government is reluctant in handling the security situations in the southeast. Yeah, but it's not just that but the federal if, government is faced no, no, with no, challenges we are not across talking of a, a kinetic angle because it, it seems you understand security from kinetic angle. No, part of it non-kinetic, for example, release of Mr. Namdekal, right. it's non-kinetic, then because the thing has taken time, you have a number of ideal youths, you have to rehabilitate them. If you rehabilitate them and they are gainfully employed, they are busy, they won't have time to do a number of these things. Not all of them are in pop, And give people a sense of belonging. So that those who are even supporting them, we no longer support them. When you come, they say, well, what these people are saying is true. Right. So yeah. the, the, the local politicians yes. in the Southeast, including the governors, yes. according to you, yeah. are unable or unwilling yes. to muster the political will to solve the problem. I agree with you. Right. Yes. I, I'm, well, I'm saying what you yes. said. Yes. So it's not me that yes. you're agreeing yes. with. I, I'm simply... Reiterating they don't have the what you said, will right, to tackle the issue because there are a number of things they should do. Right. It's not federal government that should do everything. There are a number of things the various state government in the south you should do. Right. There are a number of things other political leaders should do. Right. So, this, given that the political leaders in the southeast yes. are unable or unwilling yes. to do that which you think they ought to do, yes. who do you think can solve this problem and end the crisis? Will it require the direct intervention of President Tinubu? Yes, as I said before, the security challenges in the Southeast revolved under the incarceration of Nam de Kano, because a number of non-state actors use him as an excuse to perpetrate violence in the zone. Let Mr. President, you see, as I told you, Dr. Chukwe Meke Ezife, before he died, he pleaded with him, Mr. President to release Nam de Kano. I spoke with him barely an hour before he died. Uh, Chief Emmanuel Iwanya would do something. Chief Mbazlike Amechi, 93 years. In fact, he pleaded with the Buhari government to give him that as a parting gift to release Mr. Nam de Kano. Even Professor George Obiozo repeatedly, please release Mr. Nam de Kano. 
if government, federal government, is sensitive to the feelings of the people, we shall be delighted if Mr. President will release Mr. Namde. If the moment Mr. Namde Khan is released from what we've found out from our various interaction with the people, security challenges in the southeast and, will be reduced to barest right. minimum. And, and you are convinced that there are no moves behind the scenes taking place? Because, I mean, we've had members of the National Assembly here who said they've marshaled, I mean, dozens, possibly even over a hundred there members are a number, of parliament there are a who, who of were uh, going it's, behind the scenes to kind of do things. There I mean, are, it's a matter of I'm, there's negotiations taking I'm place. Aware, right. I'm aware of some. I'm aware of some. Um, but our appeal is that uh, Mr. President should certainly intervene, release Mr. Namde Karno, and see that peace will return to the Southeast. Because it is central, it is fundamental to peace process in the Southeast. If these leaders, these respectable leaders, could all at different times say, look, release this young man, I think they have a point. Okay. We've interacted with our people. The moment Mr. Namde Kari is released, no person will have any reason again to perpetrate violence in the Southeast. And that's why we are appealing. We are still appealing. Whatever it is, let Mr. Namde Khan be released. Okay. So well, that I, people I, will no longer uh, uh, perpetrate violence in the South in his name. Right. I do hope there are people listening to you and uh, making sense of what you're suggesting. Uh, I want to thank you very much indeed for coming in and uh, for talking to us. Uh, Professor Charles Mwekak, who is the Secretary General of the Igbo Elders Consultative Forum. Thank